Paul Gascoigne is Gaza. Gaza is at the center of Gaza mania. Fame and the trappings of fame on and off the football field are his life now. At the height of Gaza mania, Paul Gascoigne was, without doubt, the most famous man in Britain. His incredible performances for England at the 1990 World Cup, alongside his passionate emotional reactions, won the hearts of the public. For the next year, Gaza could be seen everywhere, from Downing Street to Madame Two Swords, Top of the Pops to Aftershave ads. He even tried to take on Monopoly. Just two minutes of extra time left and England have it all to do if they want to avoid the penalty shootout. Here's Trevor Stephen, the cross from Barnes, Lineker can't get to it, it's Gascoigne and it's a goal! Oh my word! Paul Gascoigne has put England in front in the dying minutes of this final! And there it is, the referee blows the final whistle and England have done it! Graham Taylor takes Paul Gascoigne in his arms, the England fans are beside themselves! That's how Gaza the Game optimistically describes an imaginary future. Such was the overwhelming confidence during Gaza Mania. In reality, Gaza would lose his mind and most of the internal parts of his knee in the 91 FA Cup final, miss Euro 92 completely while England finished bottom of the group, and then not even qualify for the World Cup in 94. But these were brighter times. Everyone loved Gaza and everyone wanted a piece of him. His agent was so inundated with requests and proposals they had to set up a dedicated company. Paul Gascoigne Promotions licensed his name and image to appear on everything. Toys, video games, shell suits and jigsaw puzzles. Released in time for Christmas in 1990, Gaza the Game was Milton Bradley's bite of that cherry. So here's your context. Now let's look at the game itself. The game comes with a cardboard pitch, a plastic ball, 56 playing cards and a free poster of the man himself. The aim of the game is exactly like normal football. You want to score more goals than the opposite team and to score a goal you need to get the ball across the line between the two goal posts. At the start you get dealt eight cards each and you take it in turns to play one. Every card has different movement instructions and you'll find that some are more useful than others in getting the ball towards your opponent's goal. To show you how to play the game, I'll need a little help from Henry Crane. Right Crane, I'm going first and I'm going to play this one. Lay your card down and then follow the instructions on it. So, three forward, three diagonally left. Then pick up another card from the pack. Crank, you'll go. Don't rush me! <laughs> okay, seven forward. I'm going to play this one. Diagonally right, six. Two left, seven forward. We're getting closer! <laughs> My turn. Wait, did you see that? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Six diagonally left. You'll go. Nine forward. So that means you've had a shot. Splendid. At this point, you've scored a goal, unless I can save it with a goalkeeper card or a corner card. Luckily, I'm going to play a goalkeeper card. How could you? Five forward, four diagonally right. Three left. Now, if you get a free kick card, they can be really useful. You get to choose the route of the ball. So, three forward. And then you can choose to go diagonally left, straight forward or right. I'm going to go right. Then you can play another card afterwards. So I'll play this one. Three left, 
six forward. Shot. Your goalkeeper or corner card, Crane? Oh, it's a total failure. Ha <laughs> ha, one nil to me. You finally did something right. If you use a corner card to save the ball, place the ball by the flag the same colour as on the card. The player who had the shot gets to cut the pack. And if the card pick shows the same colour as the corner flag, it's a goal. If not, it's been saved and the other player gets to start with a goal kick. Now probably the most powerful card in the game is a single penalty card. You can play this as soon as you get into the opponent's penalty box. Your opponent then cuts the deck and they've got to find a card with a goalkeeper's hand symbol on it. That means they saved it. Anything else is a goal. The half ends when the last card in the deck has been picked up. Shuffle the cards and do the same for the second half. The winner is the person with the most goals when the deck runs out again. That'll take forever. I want results now, now, now. I guess it's not really surprising that I beat you at football, seeing as you've got no <laughs> legs. <laughs> you can be cruel. Hang with Craig is filmed in front of a live studio audience. You might have noticed, despite being plastered all over the box, Gazza himself doesn't actually appear on any of the cards. Unfortunately, there's no Strangler an Emu card, and you can't play turn up at an armed police standoff with some chicken, a fishing rod and a dressing gown to disrupt your opponent's attack. In fact, the players featured actually look a bit dated even for the time. You can pick out Keegan, Shilton, Dalgleish, Koppel and Archibald, well-known players from about a decade previous. And that's because this wasn't a new game. In the rush to cash in on Gazamania, MB just slapped Gazza's mug all over one of their previously released games. Kickoff came out in 1981 with the same pitch, the same ball and the same cards. And it doesn't stop there. The first version of the game was called Penalty, made by Peeps Games and was originally released in 1960. Back then, it had a paper pitch and a coin-style ball, but the cards and gameplay were ultimately exactly the same. The game was originally invented by a chap called Ernesto Scola from Milan. In the rulebook, it claims he worked with 12 specialists who played nearly 18,000 trial games over a five-year period before it was released publicly. I mean, that's got to be an embellishment, right? I can imagine Ernesto and some chums playing it down the cafe. Three left, six forward. Until one day someone says, hang on a minute, we could make some money out of this. But who knows? Sadly, Ernesto died soon after its release, but his game sold over one million copies in Europe and South America before the Castell brothers brought it to England as penalty in 1960. Since its invention, it's regularly been re-released in many different forms all over the world, with its latest version coming in 2010 as a retro-styled novelty gift. To be popular for so long, it must be doing something right, and it is a mildly entertaining way to waste a short amount of time. To be honest though, it's quite limited and doesn't really require a great amount of skill. I found it quickly becomes a game of who can boot it the furthest down the field, with the only real way to score being the free kick and penalty cards. It does create realistic score lines though. 1-0, 2-0 and 2-1 are all common results, unless someone gets dealt some really bad cards. It's possible for your hand to get clogged with goalkeeper and corner cards, which are only playable at certain times, meaning your choice of attacking cards is limited. Gaza the game, unsurprisingly, doesn't seem to be in high demand at the moment. There's quite a few about and you can pick it up complete for about a tenner. In the digital age we live in, it's nice to get away from a screen every once in a while. So it's worth a look, even just for that little hit of nostalgia. If you remember playing this at the time, or any other versions, leave a comment and let me know what you think. As always, if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, share, subscribe, follow, whatever you can. And I will see you next time.